The race to 5G is on, and the battle for talent is getting fierce. Welcome to 5G Talent Talk with Carrie Charles, a podcast dedicated to helping you face the future workforce head on. Navigate this challenging talent landscape with innovative strategies to attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work. Only here on 5G Talent Talk with Carrie Charles, CEO of Broadstaff Talent Solutions. Thanks for joining me today on 5G Talent Talk. I'm Carrie Charles, your host. Happy to be here, and I'm also very excited about our guest today, Donna Johnson. She is the Chief Marketing Officer of Cradle Point. Donna, thanks for being here with me today. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I am too. I am too. So there's uh, there's so many people, and uh, you know, especially women in in telecommunications and tech, that really have their eyes set on the C-suite. And I'm just curious about your journey and how you got to your seat today. Uh, well, like many people's careers, it was not a straight journey. Um, somebody once told me that you know there's no such thing as a career ladder that implies a linearity that just doesn't exist, to be honest. Um, so I kind of wended my way back and forth, uh, always with technology companies. Started in engineering, did a lot of work in product management, kind of vacillated between the two got into uh, product marketing, which turns out it really matched a lot of my skills, which are around talking uh, about the product, but also understanding the technology and really melding those in a way of trying to explain technology to our customers, our market, our stakeholders in a way that was very clear. It turns out that was a, a really good combination of skills that, that I had been building to and didn't know it. Um, and then eventually just grew into more of an overall marketing role. Uh, so went from talking about the product to how do we obviously generate demand for the product and um, you know just get more people excited about, about where we're going and sort of buying into the journey that, that we're on. Um, so yeah, it wasn't straightforward. I will say that I've had people kind of ask me, well, like you said, how do you get there? And I don't think that it's a career path to get there. But I would say, particularly for women who, were, who want to advance, a few things that I did that I thought were were great was always be interested in what's new. Be open to new things. Take new opportunities. Don't ever feel like I'm pigeonholed. I'm in this role and I have to stay here. Always be curious about what happens around you. What's happening in the rest of the business? What's happening in the world? What's happening in technology? Take on new opportunities. And if you do that, good things happen to you. You move up, you move sideways, you move around. But eventually, I think you can land somewhere in a, in a job you enjoy, which is which is what I've done. Well said, Donna. Well said. So tell the cradle point story. That is, that's what you're, you're an expert at, right? Telling that story. So let's hear it. <laughs> well, I should have thought about, first of all, saying I was an expert and then being forced to prove it. <laughs> so, I guess now you'll have to be the judge of whether I was. We'll right. give you some grace. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but um, so cradle point's been on a long journey, actually. And I've been here about six years. So I've, I've been fortunate enough to experience quite a bit of that. And, um, you know, when I, when I started, we, we really had a vision around uh, cellular, at the time, largely 4G, as a source of business transformation. So um, businesses, and to some extent, government agencies, first responders, a lot of organizations needed a better way to connect. They uh, often were forced to either be in an office, a fixed location, literally with wires kind of tying them down. Um, sometimes those were unreliable. Sometimes they were hard to come by, particularly in more rural or, or small towns and things like that. Um, or they were in a vehicle and they were trying to use their phone or a little USB stick to connect. Um, but with connectivity being so fundamental to business of all types, we felt like there was a better way to connect to ensure reliability. And that was to use the cellular network, um, but not just as a hotspot, but use it really in a way that that enterprises, IT folks and enterprise companies were used to thinking about network connectivity, something predictable, something reliable, something they could really base their business on, but at the same time, get away from kind of the, the tyranny of wires and be able to take that business anywhere. So that's really what Cradle Point started was in this connectivity, bringing enterprise scale, enterprise manageability to a technology that had often been thought of as kind of a consumer technology. And by doing that, we were able to make businesses more reliable. They could fall over to cellular if they had a failure. They could use cellular to open a new business quickly instead of waiting on wires. They could take their business on the road. They can incorporate IoT, kiosks and signage and other types of things. 
um, to really expand the way that they did business. Eventually, during COVID, they could send their employees home and still allow them to connect securely using cellular. Um, I get excited and I tend to run on. So please raise your hand if I if I go on too long. But that's that's where we started. And then over the last couple of years, we've expanded that vision to really say, well, what else do businesses need to take on the road with them? Um, it's not just the connectivity, it's the security. So if you're going to move from office to home, to vehicle, to work site, to a temporary location, you need to make sure you have consistent security. You need to take application optimization. How do I make sure that I'm getting to my cloud and my applications or my network uh, reliably, making sure I have good quality? How do I take advantage of the cellular network, including slicing in the 5G network to be able to get some predictability in that connection? Um, in, in general, how do I bring a trusted, secure, reliable, optimized experience with me everywhere that I go? Um, and we feel like that's really going to continue to allow our, our customers to innovate, to take more advantage of the of the reliability and the flexibility that 5G offers them, um, and really let them feel free to focus on their business and, and less on their, their connectivity. So Cradle Point is part of Ericsson. It is. Yes. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah. Um, I should have said that in my introduction. No, it's great. It's right behind you. It's uh, it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we... Uh, about three years ago now, were acquired by Ericsson, um, which was such a fantastic fit because many, many of your listeners, well, you're on a 5G talent talk, so they all know who Ericsson is. Um, but, you know, over 50%, <clears throat> I'm trying to make sure I get the stat right. I think over 50% of 5G traffic outside of China goes through Ericsson radius. And wow. so they have a huge vested interest and a shared vision in, in 5G as an enterprise transformational technology. And so becoming part of them really let us say we've got the, the, the IT, the enterprise side of that connection, as well as the infrastructure side, the, the network side. And we felt like um, those two things together would allow us to really innovate in that connectivity beyond mm -hmm. the way other companies treat the 5G network, which is kind of as a black box. So um, we've already started to innovate on things like network slicing on the 5G network. Um, to be able to allow more predictability and, and um, best fit networks. Um, we're looking at AI types of capabilities across the network. We're looking at actual programmability. If you're following the conversation around the global network platform to actually be able to allow our enterprises to say, not only do I want to use the 5G network, but this is what I want from it. This is how I want it to adapt to me. Um, and those are all innovations that have been possible because we're part of, of Ericsson. So there's been an evolution of 5G, right? Over the really, I don't know, many years, but let's say the last five years specifically. Where are we today in that evolution? So I sometimes tell people, I think we may have oversold 5G five years ago. Um, <laughs> and again, your listeners probably are aware of that because they've been following 5G. And I think that we started out by talking about the eventual the eventuality of 5G, but we got there a little too fast. We got there before the technology supported that. Um, and so in the beginning, I think, you know, we talked about a lot, but we sort of ended up with a network that was that was better than 4G, but, but potentially for a lot of people, not noticeably better. With the introduction of C-band a few years ago, I think that really started to kickstart 5G because we started to see speeds that were not only better than 4G, uh, but honestly that were better than the broadband connections that many people could get. Um, and I think that's where... 5G really started to be a game changer for uh, for everyone, but consumers, but particularly businesses who, who needed that kind of performance and that kind of reliability. Um, I think now we're starting to see, you know, millimeter wave is still kind of slowly rolling out, at, you know, in different places around the world, but we're going to see the standalone networks come out soon. And we're already seeing some coverage of that and that's increasing and, and Ericsson is a big part of that. Um, and that standalone network is going to allow us to, to take advantage of the slicing that I mentioned. Um, it's really where we're going to get some of the extremely low latency applications um, and again, you know, improved performance. So I think we're going to continue to see 5G evolve. Uh, we really want to take advantage of what's there. We don't want to just treat it as yet another connection. We really want to treat it as something that is different than, say, a, a static broadband connection. It's a dynamic connection that we can take advantage of as, as well as potentially change through things like programmability. 
We've also um, started to see 5G become more prevalent as a, as a LAN technology. So again, many of you may be familiar with the concept of a private 5G network, mm -hmm. where we actually take a 5G network and we, we build it inside your facility, your airport, your warehouse, your factory. Um, and sometimes that can be using the spectrum that your carriers use, and sometimes it can use unlicensed spectrum, such as, such as CBRS. But what it lets you do is create an extremely fast, low latency, low cost network that's completely suited to your needs um, and um, kind of get away from Wi-Fi because in a lot of cases, Wi-Fi doesn't either have performance that's needed. It definitely doesn't have the, the uh, capacity. So you end up with a lot more Wi-Fi uh, access points than you would say 5G radios, uh, supports concepts like completely isolated networking and edge compute. So I think 5G has evolved on the public side to be faster, adaptable with more services. And on the private side is, has really moved into a competitive source of a, a LAN connection. So a, a big part of your world is, uh, you know, messaging and obviously marketing. So what are some of those challenges when you're, you know, messaging 5G today? So it used to be not as much anymore that whenever we would talk about 5G, people would say, well, I was driving down Highway 101 and my phone call dropped. Therefore, I don't want to trust my business to cellular. And so we've had some challenges just in sharing the difference between um, the types of connectivity we offer to the 5G network from the experience you might have had on your phone even, even a few years ago. So really getting people to understand that it is a highly reliable network. Um, with capacity, it has predictability, um, and that it really is something that your business can depend on as a sole connection or as a secondary connection, or even sometimes as two connections um, with traffic moving seamlessly between the two or even bonding two cellular connections together. So that's been one of the challenges of messaging is just getting over this initial sort of um, concern on, on just using cellular as a business technology. Um, I think we've done a great job. I mean, I'm pat myself and our company on the back a little bit. I think we've done a good job in messaging around that. Um, and so now I think we're getting more still concerns about cost um, data plans. So that's something that that we and Ericsson work with our our uh, 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 service providers on that. And, and they're very interested in how do they attract more enterprise business? So how do they get competitive data plans? I think that's that's been a big one. Um, and then just in general coverage, you know, is it available where it needs to be? Um, does it have the performance that I need? If I open a store in two locations, will I get consistent performance across both of those locations? Those are the types of concerns we tend to hear. How will 5G facilitate business transformation like in the future from this point forward? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because that's that's really what we're excited about. And, and we've moved beyond talking about 5G as a connectivity source to 5G as a source of transformation. And if you just think about it as a network in my in my building or my storefront that I can use, then I think you miss out on the real value of it because it's something that goes with you everywhere. And that's a simple statement, but I think it has a lot of ramifications because what it means is you can not just open a new business where you want. It means you could open a business whenever and wherever you want. So you really can have the freedom to say, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do things in a park. I'm going to do things at home. Um, I'm going to do things in a different location in the city. I'm going to expand nationally. And I know that my network follows me. And that's a really powerful statement. Um, so right there, you just get an agility that you didn't have before. Um, I still think that's probably one of the biggest transformational aspects. Um, but I think when you couple 5G with cloud, that's really where you start to see the, the big changes because if you're, it's not enough for just your network connectivity to follow you. You really need your, your entire infrastructure, your security infrastructure, your application infrastructure, your SD-WAN infrastructure. That all needs to travel with you as well. Because if you go to a, you know, if you go to a park to open up a business and you have your connectivity, but you don't have your security, then then you're sort of only got half of the problem solved. So when we couple the mobility of 5G and the agility of 5G with the mobility really and agility of cloud, you really end up being able to take your entire business infrastructure with you wherever you go. So whether you're working at a coffee shop at home, a temporary location, an office, all of a sudden you've got this rich um, 
set of policies and, and user identification and application mm -hmm. identification and, and zero trust capabilities that go with you wherever you go. And that really gives your freedom, your business, the freedom to, to innovate, to grow, to uh, reach out to uh, customers in new ways or to, to work with employees in new ways. I have never heard it described like that before. I mean, that's uh and I mean, I get it. I really get it. You know, even as I understand, you know, I'm in this world every day, but, you know, even as somebody who may not be in this world or an enterprise, I mean, I really get that. So, you know, so yes, Donna, you have now become an expert. Okay. I can check the box. Yeah. <laughs> no, that that's, it's pretty cool. I love, I love what you just said. Um, let's expand on that a little bit because I, I'd like to hear your thoughts about emerging trends in the marketplace. Um, well, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about AI as an emerging trend. I probably would yep. never be invited back to another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, so no question, you know, one of the trends that we're seeing is AI. And of course, that crosses all industries and all technologies. That's not just um, not just 5G. Um, but I think the way that we want to use AI um, is to help. So one of the trends that we're seeing, and we think 5G helps with this, is is a reduced uh, amount of staff or time um, and sometimes even talent, you know, in the IT space. Um, it's hard to recruit IT, particularly with things like security knowledge. I think we all know that. Um, and so we feel like 5G helps you reduce the amount of people, literally, that you need to manage your network by having you have a single connectivity source, uh, by simplifying your network overall. Um, but AI kind of takes that further. So AI allows us to provide more assist on how do you um, optimize your network, how do you configure your network, how do you troubleshoot your network, how can you get a better understanding of what's going on um, without always having to have just more people doing that. So I think, again, the combination of a sort of 5G networking trends in general and, and AI is going to really help us reduce um, the headcount and, and actually improve the experience. Because if you can really see where, where, when do I use applications? What's the demand they make on the network? How can I better support that? Even eventually, you know, what slice should I use to optimize, optimize both my application performance and my cost? Those are things that AI can really help us with. So we're really excited about innovations that both Ericsson and Creative Point are, are doing in that area. Um, so I think that's a big, a big trend. Mm -hmm. um, if I can state the second obvious, Security is a, is a big trend, <laughs> concern about security, yeah. concern about cybersecurity threats. Um, so again, you know, that's something that that we're trying to, to address. Um, and again, it's not just a connectivity source, although 5G is a very secure network in and of itself. It's um, addressing things like isolation of your network, isolation of your IoT devices. Um, and really the way we've taken it is, is building zero trust into everything. So our mantra is, um, validate first, then connect, as opposed to connect first and then validate. So from the very beginning, um, we make sure that, you know, you are who you are. We can use SIM-based authentication, which is a big um, uh, capability that we have as a, as a 5G player that traditional networking companies don't have um, to make sure that your device is what it is. And then we inherently limit uh, what you can connect to and even can look at things like where are you? What network are you connecting on to control that as well? So, um, and then we have added a cybersecurity layer that actually allows you to be isolated from malicious websites, phishing attacks, even, believe it or not, malicious AI. Um, because we've definitely seen people uploading confidential information to these large language models, generative AI products that basically put it into the public Um uh, database. And so uh, we're actually protecting against that as well. So I think, you know, I, AI cool. is for the good, um, but also um, security, which is, which is, I guess, kind of for the bad. So we see both of those as trends continuing to grow in, in 2024. And again, I think we see that connectivity can't be the only part of the network you think about. We really need to have an infrastructure that carries all of that along, along with it. Right. So let's talk a little bit about workforce and, uh, you know, company culture. Um, in your words, and again, from your perception, right, as a leader, describe the cradle point company culture. What's it like I, to I, work there? I, I would love to, because that's something we're so proud of. Um, 
And, and not only that we've built a good culture, but that we've been able to preserve it even as we become part of Ericsson and maybe even modifying Ericsson's culture. Um, but I would sum it up in um, our, our uh, outgoing CEO, George Mulhern used to, used to say that we're, we're humble and hungry. And, and that's really a good part of it. And then a, a second major message is, you know, don't point a finger, lend a hand. And I think those two are probably of all the companies I've ever worked for, you know, they all have a vision statement. They all have corporate I don't know, philosophies, but those two, we, we, we really live. And every member of the company can cite those. Um, and what it's created is an environment that's very welcoming, um, that's very appreciative of everybody's voice, um, differences among us, um, and and really collaborative. And I think that's just so important because in the end, collaboration is what makes work fun. Um, work is work. Of course, we all love technology, but in the end, you you know, you really your your job satisfaction comes from the people you work with. And so, respecting people, being collaborative, listening to people searching for answers, but not pointing a finger um, and remaining all of us humble about ourselves. Um, but at the same time, still be ambitious. I think that's the culture that we built. Um, and I know I started out by bragging that I was good at messaging. So I feel like maybe that wasn't being humble. So no, 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 it's um, my values. It's um, good. And and it's okay. I, I truly <laughs> believe it's okay because we have to though, seriously, in, um, you know, as, as just humans in the workforce, I mean, we do have to state our strengths, right? And I think we can be humble about stating our strengths, which is exactly what you did. So I think, uh, I think you're good there. <laughs> um, and by the way, you need to have a strength, okay, in messaging to be a CMO. So to be fair. <laughs> box checked, okay. Um, so let me ask you this, you know, there's, uh, there's been a talent shortage in tech, we've heard about it. I mean, and then all the, you know, the, the layoffs and all the people that have, have entered, re-entered the, uh, you know, the marketplace. And what's happening in your view right now? Are you seeing a tighter labor market right now? Are you seeing things loosen up? Um, anything, you know, anything special that you, you know, that you're doing at Cradle Point to attract yeah. new talent? You know, it's funny. I, I think that we, we it, more in the U.S. maybe, but also globally, I think there's a sense that there's no jobs out there, but there's also a sense uh, by employers that there's no candidates out there. So it's kind of, it's kind of this weird schizophrenia that we have going on right now. Um, I know that there's been layoffs in technology across the board, um, but at the same time, I think there's a tight market for talent. Um, I, I think that there's, we're always, we're always looking for good people. Um, and we're looking for people who have curiosity who have you know skill sets of course that they can bring to the job but a desire to expand those skill sets to do more to be to be curious to expand um because i think that a truism of the labor market over the last couple decades has been that what you start doing may not be what you end doing um you so true be, yeah it, it, it's in my job I'm, it's probably in your job i don't know when you were a little girl did you want to grow up in and do what you're doing now? No, no, I did not have dreams of being in staffing when I was 10 years old. <laughs> so, you know, I think that's true for all of us. So we're always looking for people who bring soft skills, uh, communication, intelligence, um, the ability to collaborate, the ability to draw conclusions that, that allows them to, to move even from the role they were hired for into other roles. Of course, you have to have experience. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know your job. But I think those soft skills are so important. And when I look at people who've lasted at companies for years and grown in companies, it's generally because they have those skill sets rather than they bring any particular talent. Um, no disrespect to my uh, my programmers and developers and IT engineers. I know you have highly specialized skill sets, um, but I think it's, it's still somewhat true. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. What advice would you give today for people who are looking for career growth? I, I don't want to be trite because I think some of them you've probably heard before, but it's it's about reaching out to your network is such a big part. Um, talk to people, ask questions, listen to, listen to talks like this. Um, talk to people throughout your network and say, what are you doing? How did you get there? What do you, what do you recommend? Because just like when you were a little girl at 10, you probably didn't know that staffing existed as a position. Even at my age, I don't always know what's out there. I'm always shocked by, oh, that's a job? I had never heard of that. <laughs> right. And, and you don't know that unless you talk. So I would say the biggest thing is take advantage of the people you know and the people they know. 
Um, and just learn about what the other opportunities are. Ask about, you know, know what you're good at and then ask, hey, what are, what are the types of jobs out there that could take advantage of that skill set? Um, and then be open to new opportunities. Don't turn down a job or a promotion or a, you know, a, a transfer because you don't know how to do that job. Um, mm-hmm. You're never going to know until you do it. So really be open. Um, so I, I said in the beginning that careers are not a ladder. They're not one directional up. Um, I was at a presentation a few years ago and they said, your career is like a jungle gym. You know, you go up, you go sideways, you go up a ladder, you go down a slide. And I think if you think about your career that way and think about a move might not always be up, it might be sideways, might even be slightly down. Um, But only by taking those moves can you open up new avenues. So talk, listen, and, and be open to change are probably the biggest There's a lot of wisdom in that, Donna. In fact, um, we all at my age with children who are just entering the workforce right now, they all need to listen to this, to this episode. (laughs) So, and I tell uh, my kids that, and I don't think they have any respect for that message. So thank you. Right, right. Exactly. Well, they don't when we say it, right? But when somebody else says it, they do. (laughs) Um, So talk about the future of Cradle Point. What's the vision? Well, um, you know, we're, we were bought, as I mentioned, about three years ago, and we're continuing really to go through still an ongoing transition as part of that. Um, so I think you're going to see us become more strongly identified as, as Ericsson and part of Ericsson. Um, so um, losing a little of that cradle point name, um, but not the culture, not the great products or technology or people. Um, but we think that as part of doing that, we'll be able to get better, tighter, integrated with the network itself. Um, And even looking to see what can we do with the other enterprise solutions offered by Ericsson. So um, you may know Vonage. They're also part of Ericsson, um, one of the largest providers of communication platforms, as well as network programmability tools um, and communication uh, APIs. So, you know, we think there's a lot we can do together as an organization. So we really have um, just a shared vision of how can we continue to transform the enterprise. Uh, We have a vision that, you know, a business should be able to start and the only cord they should have to worry about is the power cord, right? Everything else Ooh. should be invisible to them. They should just be able Love to that. pull their communications, their network, their security, their infrastructure from the air and carry it with them everywhere. Um, and so we're trying to figure out how can we, how can we increase that? In fact, I even had a conversation today with someone and they said, well, can we not pull power from the air? And it turns <laughs> out there's some things in 6G that are actually leaning towards that. So um, you know, we're really looking for that transformation in businesses. And then how can we be part of that? And how can we bring what we think we're good at um, in a shared vision with our customers to, to support that transformation? Mm. So Donna, the Cradle Point website, what is it? Where can we get more information on open jobs? I'm sure there's people listening right now that are like, gosh, I this is really cool. You know, I how do I apply for a job? What's what's going on with Cradle well, Point? It's, it's cradlepoint.com. Um, I'm assuming slash careers. I should know that as CMO, but um, I think it's easy to find. Um, definitely have some jobs out there. We're a global organization. So we operate not just in the US. That's where our headquarters is. We have operations around the world um, in marketing, but also in lots of technology positions, sales positions, and, and other types of roles. So um, please take a look. Um, and then there's, you know, Ericsson as well, right? They have they have a lot of positions as well. Um, and so please come, come by, visit, let us know what you're good at and let's have a conversation. Wonderful. Donna, thank you for coming on the show. This has just been a pleasure. And uh, I, uh, I, I love this subject, you know, of marketing. I know we talked about so much, but this is one of my passions is marketing. So um, uh, just really, really enjoyed it. Also to have a career shift. See, never know. You never know in my second half of my life, whatever that looks like. Right. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you for, I enjoyed it as well. Thank you so much for inviting me on. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you for listening to another informative episode of 5G Talent Talk brought to you by RCR Wireless News, Telecom Careers, and Broadstaff Talent Solutions. As we advance into the future, we promise to bring you the resources you need to navigate this ever-changing landscape of 5G to help you attract, retain, and engage people in this new world of work. To access the show notes or leave a review, visit broadstaffglobal.com. Until next time.